हेलो 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 हाय गाइस गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम बैक टू न्यू वीडियो की हाल चाल आई होप यू आर डूइंग गुड इन दिस वी गो नो सी अ प्रॉब्लम डिफ्यूज द बॉम्ब इट्स एक्चुअली इजी एंड व्हाई इट इज इजी बिकॉज यू कैन सॉल्व इट बाय अ बूट फोर्स अगेन रियली अपॉलॉजीज आई कुड नॉट ब्रिंग येस्टरडेज कॉन्टेस्ट वीडियो टूडे ऑल्सो इट्स अ बिट डाइसी माई हेल्थ बट स्टिल आई वॉन्ट टू बी रेगुलर and yeah at least i can bring today's video sorry for the camera not being on but yeah the problem simply says that we you have a bomb to defuse and your time is running out again uh, let's not go into this uh, entire shit the entire thing is that you are given an array code and the value of k if the k is more than 0 as you can see if the k is positive the ith number should be replaced with the sum of next k numbers so this number should be replaced with the next sum of next k k as in 3 so this number should be replaced by next numbers 7 plus 1 8 plus 4 12 so i replace the number by 12 and if the k is less than 0 the ith number should be replaced with the sum of previous k numbers so as in this example let's say my k is negative for this number i should replace it with the previous two numbers so 2 plus 3 is nothing but 5 so i replaced this specific 4 with the value of 5 and if the k is 0 simply uh, replace the ith number with 0 so obviously if the k is 0 the entire array will be zero itself so i can handle this case obviously separately and ultimately they are also given that the array is circular if you remembered in this example when i took i as this i told you previous elements so previous was only 2 how i end up taking 3 also because it is circular circular array is that from this element 3 next element will be 2 from 2 the previous element will be 3 so this is the essence of circular array i have to ultimately tell what is the final array result here itself now uh, the one very basic brute force approach which comes to our mind and which is very obvious also that for every index i go on to the next k elements and obviously for this index if i will try to go to next k elements if i cannot go to k elements i will have to go about and do a roundabout if you don't know the concept of roundabout i should make it clear to you that for any index i the next element will be nothing but i plus 1 mod n so this is a simpler circular concept again if you are very confused in these mod terms firstly if you are i highly recommend not to get confused in this because it is very useful even if you are then what you can do is to replicate the scenario replicate the entire array itself 5 7 1 4 so after 5 the element will be 4 itself and before 5 the element will be 4 itself so one way is to print out the exact array again but i will not recommend it i will recommend it to understand this concept that you just do a mod n take the next index the way you would have taken it but simply do a mod n to simply do a roundabout so 3 plus 1 mod 4 will be nothing but a 0 itself thus its next element will be nothing but index 0 same way if i would have had some index i want to know the previous index for it i'll simply do a j minus 1 it's just that i should do a mod n but whenever you do a subtraction and do some mod like some modulo operation you have to make sure that this b can be higher so negative number mod n would give you incorrect value thus we always make sure to add the n so that even if this number entirely becomes negative still it this n could actually handle it and separately make sure we are correct so this is the reason i will do a g minus 1 plus n mod n so 0 minus 1 plus 4 mod 4 3 mod 4 is nothing but 3 cool uh, so this is the entire concept of how a circular array works now coming on back the simple proof was suppose would have mentioned us that for this index i will let's say for this index i i'll go to the next k elements get their sum put it here then again for this index i i'll go to next k elements get the sum put it here so for every index i am going on to next k elements so complexity will be, will be n into k every index k elements and you can also see n into k would simply work but obviously we know that it is easy because its brute force would work let's think of more optimal solution for it how we will think of optimal solution we realize that this is one such concept which is being used there is also one thing if we look at very cl clearly here if i am at this index let's say my k would have been 3 so i want to look for the next three elements and take their sum if i have their sum 
and again forget things being a cyclic right now if i go on to the next index i am simply taking the sum of next k elements did you find something what is common between these two states because earlier imagine that you have sum of this state now you want to find the sum of this state x2 is gone x3 x4 is there x5 has come in picture it is exactly same as sliding window approach so what we realized is we will simply mix this concept and this concept and thus we will use sliding window and rotation to simply get my result how i will do it let's see the example example one which is given the problem itself this one when the k is positive i will also show and do a trial off when the k is negative but when the k is actually positive for us we simply okay at the very beginning index i will firstly have to know what is the current window because obviously you know i have to move my window when i say move my window i will have to move my start move my end that is how i will move my window so for the current window i will have to take the sum of k elements here the k was 3 so i'll take the sum of k elements and for the first window the answer will be nothing but 12 okay now as i go on to the next index i want to find the new window sum where the start has been incremented as you can see start has been incremented and end also has been incremented after incrementing it has come round about so with this specific logic but still you do you, you don't want to do the entire sum what you will do before incrementing your i or even after you can increment your i you can simply say that okay aryan what i will do is that i knew for this specific array when i i came on here my start is here my end is here and now i want to find the sum of this i will take the previous sum whatsoever i had i will subtract my nums of start i will add my nums of end plus 1 so i subtracted my nums of start i added my nums of end plus 1 and make sure now things are circular so whenever i say end plus 1 do a mod n and again n plus 1 in the is the index and when i say start okay start will always be inside the bounds but still do a modern for safety so with this in just one operation or i should say in just these two operations i got the current value which is 10 so i removed 5 sorry i added a 5 which is end plus 1 which is this value and i removed a 7 which is start thus i got a value 10 now obviously the new window here it is the start and here it is the end so for the new window increase your start by 1 increase your end by 1 now you have got the answer for this window for to find the answer for the next window what i will do i will simply have my i here i will say that aryan remove this from the existing sum which is 10 in this case remove the nums of remove the nums of start which is 1 i simply remove it and add the nums of end plus 1 which is 7 as you can see i added a 7 i removed a 1 thus i received a value 16 and thus i can simply keep on repeating until the last index thus you will simply see that for every index and i have n indexes for every index my operation will be nothing but 1 now you might ask are you but in the very beginning i have to take the sum of the entire array yeah obviously for the first index your operation will be k but for every other consecutive indexes which means for the index 0 your operation will be k for the i equal to 1 i equal to 2 i equal to 3 and so on and so forth your operation will be 1 so your complexity complexity will be nothing but k plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 how many times n minus 1 times so it's nothing but n plus k o of n plus k as a time complexity just to wrap it up let's see the example number 2 also where the k is negative it is exactly same it's just that whenever the k is negative obviously you will start from the first index in that if the k is 2 which means you have to take obviously this window now what is this window this window is nothing but a window of size 2 but it is before this specific index so i can easily say that from the end a window of size 2 is my actual answer or is my actual starting window and how i will do it for if you remembered that to actually start off my uh, when the k is positive my start was nothing but 1 index 1 because in the very beginning index will be 0 i start off from so start will be 1 and end will be nothing but if i this is 0 1 2 3 end will be nothing but my actual k 
which is the index itself. So this will be my start and end for the starting index when the k is positive. But when the k is negative, when the k is negative, obviously my start will be n minus k again. But you say I are in the k is negative minus two because minus two indicates because k being negative indicates that I should go in reverse direction. So I just assume that the k is positive by taking the absolute value. Thus my start will be n minus k and end will be n minus one because I'm taking the last window of size k. And thus now I can repeat the exact same stuff that, okay, the current sum will be nothing but nine plus three, which is 12. As I move on, which means as I move on to the next index, I will simply say S will be nothing but existing value of S, which is 12 minus nums of, or I should say code of start, which is minus nine plus code of end plus one, which is plus two, simply getting the value of four and then increasing your start and end and thus simply repeating the process. Cool, I hope you guys got it. Let's see the code, it's, it's exactly same. That firstly, we had this base case that, okay, what if the k is zero? Simply return the empty array, or I should say the array with the value of all zeros. By default, it is all zeros initialized. Then I said that, okay, when the things are positive, when, sorry, uh, when the k is nothing but uh, positive, then it's very simple for me. I will know that my start will be nothing but one and end will be nothing but k as I showed you earlier. So my start will is one end is k. And obviously this is the sum which I, I, which I should find. But if the k is negative, I told you that this, the, the actual things will change. My start will be n minus k and end will be n minus one in that case, because I want the window from the very end of size k. So in that case, my start will be n minus k, but k should be a absolute value, which I'm subtracting and n will be n minus one. Now uh, do the summation of the first k elements, right? From this to this, I'll do the summation of the first, or like I should say for the index zero, what is the summation of the k elements which I have? And then start off my actual process. How I will do the actual process? Simply get the current result whatsoever you have. Now for the next iteration, subtract the start plus one, add the end plus one, increase the start and end, so as for the next iteration. And simply keep on repeating the process, ultimately getting the answer. Time is O of n plus k, I should say, and the space will be O of one, but n or k, I should say, k is also bounded by n, so time will be O of n plus n, which is O of n itself, and space will be O of one. I hope you guys got it. If yes, then do smash like baby. Bye-bye, take care. And yeah, sorry for not bringing the contest videos yesterday.